dinner? Can we make a dessert instead, Dad? I'm meeting Garth for a book reading and I'm already late. How about some Christmas cookies? Okay, sounds perfect. I'll swing by as soon as I'm done. I gotta go. I'm here. Love you. Kim. Uh, Sorry, I, I'm late. I didn't think you'd still come to the book reading. Why wouldn't I? Well, after what I left for you. There you go. The envelope. Oh, your chapter pages for your new manuscript. I'm so sorry. I had a crazy day at work. Yeah. Kim, don't read it here. Solid opening sentence. Yeah. Excellent use of adjectives. Is this a breakup note? I'm sorry, but yes. You're breaking up with me with a note? I just didn't want to embarrass you in public. Why? It's in the note. All right, everybody, let's begin. All right, just come back here with me, please. <laughs> Look, Kim, you're, you're really great, but I've been working at Dash of Romance blog for three years. And I'm at a point where I need to get serious about my own writing. And I need to be with someone who's serious about her writing, too. Garth, I am serious about my writing. Real writers show their work, Kim. They talk to each other about writing all the time. We've been together nearly two years. You've never shown me so much as a word. But that's just because it's not ready yet. I mean, what if you hate it? The point I'm trying to make is that I am showing my book to publishers. But we're at different levels. I'm sorry, I, d I just need to be with a serious writer right now. <laughs> Goodbye. <sighs> there she is, Sarge. A Christmas angel. <laughs> Ready to fly again? Hey, Dad. Hey, Sarge. Hi, honey. Is it really that cold out there? Well, yeah. When you factor in the wind chill from the car heater not working. Honey, you work for a car dealership. Yes, Dad, but they're not going to give you a free car as a Christmas gift. Maybe they'll give you a deal. You have been there five years. Oh, it sounds so long when you put it that way. Kim, what's wrong? Apparently, I'm single again, just in time for Christmas. Oh, kiddo. Well, we met at a book reading and broke up at a book reading. So, seems only fitting. In literary terms, we'd call that book ending. I never liked Garth anyway. He didn't? And what was his lame excuse? Oh, something about him being a real writer and me not. <laughs> Have him read the manuscript for your romance novel. It's great. Well, you're my dad. You have to say that. Anyway, I haven't finished it yet. He's so critical. Garth's not entirely wrong on one thing. If you want to be an author, you need a bigger audience. Now more than ever, I want to get that manuscript published just to prove Garth wrong. So finish it. Submit it to publishers. Stop playing it safe and put your work out there. Honey, if mom were here, what would you say? Honestly, quit complaining and take a chance. <laughs> yeah. It's getting late. I made your room up. Stay here tonight. Everything will be better in the morning. I promise. I 
did it. Say sayonara to last year's models. I just sold the last one. Woohoo! Good for you. Oh my goodness, look at this. Oh, unless Terrence pulls off a Christmas miracle, you have the trip to Aruba in the bag. Speaking of Christmas, mm -hmm. you're doing a little holiday shopping yourself. More like workshop shopping. I figured if I'm gonna up my writing game, I've gotta do something really bold. So I decided to look into writing workshops. Way to go, girl. Summer MFA program. Mm -hmm. Well, that would be too much time off work. Look at this, semester in Italy. Oh, I wish I could do that. Hang on a second. Mistletoe Inn Romance Novelists Conference? Five days at an inn in Vermont, right before Christmas. That's right up your alley. Guys, this is totally fate. Is there any way you think you guys could manage without me for one week? Sure. Thank you. Well, that one's cute. No, look at all the pitch. It's too sticky. <laughs> How about that one? That's not a Christmas tree. That's a Christmas shrub. How silly of me. <laughs> all right, that one's nice. That is right out of the nutcracker. <laughs> Right out of the nutcracker, huh? <laughs> I like that. I'm gonna use that in my book. Well, it won't be much good unless you let people read it. Oh, I am way ahead of you, Dad. Check this out. I found the perfect thing to jumpstart my writing career. Ta-da! The Mistletoe in Writing Competitions? Mm -hmm. I just decided to go ahead and take the plunge. H.T. Cowell is speaking on closing night. He is my favorite romance author, and he has never actually been seen in public. That's definitely a selling point. I just realized that if I don't actually do this now, I'm never going to do it. I'm so proud of you, honey. Thank you. And it says here that your manuscript will be read by an established publisher and a literary agent. Oh, and that there's a competition for this uh, Cowell fella to read your book? There is? I must have missed that part. Hey, you're not gonna let a little competition scare you off, are you? Too late. I've already registered. That is so good, <laughs> honey! Oh. Thank you. You will be back in time for Christmas. Of course I will be. Celebrate with lunch? Yes, please. <laughs> So sorry. You almost crushed my laptop. Oh, goodness, your stuff is just spread all over the place. Well. I see somebody came prepared for the holidays. Okay, you know what? This is personal. I'm sorry. I'm just I'm trying to help you out here. All right. What is this stuff? That's that's very important to me. <laughs> you here for the writer's conference? I am. Guilty as charged. My name's Zeke. Kim, nice to meet hey. you, I think. Who brings a clock radio to a hotel? That's not a clock radio. This is my white noise machine. It helps keep me calm while I'm writing. You know, I just met you, but somehow I'm, I'm having a really hard time picturing you calm. What is that item? This? This is my typewriter. <laughs> OK. 1950 called. They want their technology back. All right, laugh all you want. This is the exact same model typewriter Hemingway used to type up his books. Plus, this baby helped me bang out the first novel I got published. You got published? I, it's, it's a book deal. Book's not out yet. Well, maybe I need to get myself a typewriter. Maybe you should. Works great for me. See you around. Bellhop?
look lost in that conference registration kind of way. I didn't know that was a look. Oh, it is. Trust me. I had it last year, but way worse. <laughs> I'm Sam. Hi, Kim. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Wow, this is so exciting. Hello. First conference? Yeah, and I'm as giddy as a kid on Christmas morning. How does it all work? Well, the mornings are filled with lectures that we are assigned to, and that just leaves the afternoon for workshops to choose. I still can't believe H.T. Cowell is speaking on closing night. I've read every word he's ever written. I know. And no one even knows what he looks like. <laughs> Though, in my mind, he has a twinkle in his eye of a Dylan Thomas and a Jack London-esque passion for life. <laughs> well, the real mystery is why he hasn't written anything in five years. Well, rumor has it he's announcing his new book at this conference. Really? And apparently, it's 800 pages long. I know. That'll be like a monsoon after five years of drought. <laughs> I have a theory that he's already here. Yep. Oh, well, we better hurry up. The mixer's an hour. Oh, yeah, the mixer. I have to go to my room and change. Oh, let me show you. This way. Okay. So we meet again. Small world. Mm -hmm. Think maybe they overdid it with the Christmas decorations? Well, it is called the Mistletoe Inn, after all, and I happen to think that you can never have too many Christmas decorations. Interesting theory. Uh, you know what, I think that is me. That is me. Oh, fancy that. Mm. See you around. Yes, you will. I thought we were supposed to come dressed up as our favorite literary character. Oh, they sent an email canceling that. I guess people complained. They did? I know, but oh. don't worry. You are pulling this off. No, <laughs> no I'm going to go change. Oh, no, no, stop. It shows a defiant spunk. I love it. Let's grab a drink at the bar. Oh, okay. Look at how festive it is in here. Ooh, holiday drinks. Snowball Express, Rudolph's Big Ride, Santa's okay. Helper for the Tiny Tim. I think the Tiny Tim sounds very appropriate. Mm -hmm. I'll get you a Tiny Tim and I'll have a gingerbread green light. Okay. Be right back. Thank you. <sighs> you designed this thing? No. Oh, goodness. I am so sorry. Oh, hello. Hi. I don't know why they can't just give us normal name tags. <laughs> hello, Governor. Oh. It's like Charles Dickens over here. Yes. I seem to have missed a very important email. Well, I'm glad you did. I think that's a great costume. Now, the question is, which Charles Dickens character are you? It is the question. It's a mystery. I'm going to solve it. I'll see you around. Okay. Hmm. Who's your friend? Oh, he's the guy across the hall from me. He's cute. I'm so not interested in men right now. Kim, is that you? What are you doing here? I could ask you the same question. Hello. What writer wouldn't want H.T. Cowell to read his work? He's been an idol of mine for years. You know that. Garth, I'm the one that turned you on to H.T. Cowell last summer. That's not how I remember it. OK. Nice outfits. Let me guess. Uh, Alice in Wonderland. Nope, not Alice in Wonderland. I just figured it out. You're the ghost of Christmas present. <laughs> right? Yes, good job. I got it. Hey, that's a great costume, Thank don't you, you. think? Garm? It's Garth. Oh, I'm so sorry. <clears throat> well, I should go do an update. I'm live tweeting the conference for all of my fans at the Dash of Romance blog. All 23 of them. <laughs> 2300. Right. <laughs> See you around. OK. Something. Sorry? OK, I know you're not supposed to judge a book by its cover, but it does seem like you two know each other. Yes, you might say that. Garth is my ghost of Christmas past. My sympathies. Mm -hmm. Samantha. Luann. <laughs> <laughs> this is Kim and Zeke, and this is Luann. I am surprised your husband spared you for a week. Well, for H.T. Cowell coming out of hiding, my husband doesn't have much to say. Oh. <laughs> Kim here is singularly focused on winning that H.T. Cowell competition, as am I. 
You admire him that much, huh? Oh, yes. I think he's the only author I've ever read who can fully capture the way a woman feels. Amen to that. Cal's solid. I think I've read better. Oh, yeah? Does that mean you're not in the competition yourself? Oh, no, no, no. Of course I am. So, Kim, how many books have you written so far? Well, um, I've written one book, which is almost finished. It's about three quarters of the way done. I, I still have to get the ending quite perfect, but um, yeah, one. Well, it is very important to get through that first book. I remember my first book. Of course, I was in high school back then, but still counts. <laughs> and you, Zeke, is it? How many books have you published, Zeke? Who, me? Uh, just, uh, just, just the one. A published author in our midst. Which publisher? Well, it's funny when you use that word, published. Uh, it's not quite published yet. Now, what does that mean? What do well, I mean? it's a book deal, so it's coming out. It's just not quite out into the world yet. Your editor's ripping it to pieces, isn't he? Gosh, I just remembered that I left my coffee machine on upstairs. So, I'm gonna go. Lou Ann, you ought to be nice for the newbies. You just scared him off. Darling, if he can't hang with the real writers, then he should stay home. <laughs> now, Kim, we have all been you. Many authors say not to share your work till you wrote at least five books, but you know. Okay, well, that's really good advice. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I, I think this is probably my cue to leave. Oh. Tiny Tim and I are feeling a little inspired, so we're gonna go to our room and do some writing. Cheers. Happy writing. Yes. See you tomorrow. Okay, bye. Bye now. All right, you need to reel it in on the newbies. <gasps> All right. Jim. <laughs> So, you finally finished writing that book. Mm hmm almost. Almost, right, okay. So, why didn't you tell me? I guess for the same reason that you didn't tell me about this conference. I guess we both have secrets. Well, you never showed any interest in coming to conferences before. Until now. And you're not the only one who takes writing seriously. <laughs> Is that right? Mm-hmm. I just might win this contest. <laughs> Look, uh, Kim, you might want to lower those expectations just a bit. What do you mean? Well, I mean, it's your first book. You're still green. You won't win. Don't sweat it. I'm never going to be good enough for you, am I? I never said that, Kim. It's really good to see you, Garth. May the best writer win. Yeah, he will. Kim, oh, hey. You're not going out, are you? The sun's barely up. Well, an early morning run helps give me a jump start to my day. I bet when you were a kid, you stayed up all night waiting for Santa. Didn't everyone? Anyway, the final chapters of my book are still holding me up. I've got to do something to clear my head. Okay, but our first session starts in a couple hours. Then I guess I better run fast. Pretty icy. Am I bleeding? Oh, uh, no, no, no. You're just you're a bit slushy. Ugh. Uh, hey, listen, you uh, you went down pretty hard. Are you sure you're okay? Uh, yeah, the humiliation will fade, I hope. Well, do you want to come inside the cafe? It's warm, the peppermint lattes are kind of great, and our first session doesn't start for an hour. You know, I think I am going to head back and try to shower off the embarrassment. Okay. So I will just see you soon. All right. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Whoa. So, how was your run? 
horrifying. And if you ask me for details, even more horrifying. Oh, well, I think it's time to pick our workshops. See this partridge in a pear tree looking thing? Partridge? I thought those were quail. Oh, well, a partridge is just a quail with a better publicist. <laughs> <laughs> so you just pick the ornaments and our workshop group. That's fun. I'm group B. Oh. Oh, I'm group C. Oh. I wish mm -hmm. we were together. Me too. Hello. Well, hi there. Is he taken? I think it is now. Perfect. <sighs> good morning, fellow writers. And good morning, Kim. Good morning. Good morning. I'm Karen Watanabe, your facilitator and senior book editor at City Publishing. For the next several days, we'll discuss the finer points of romance writing. But first, some tools of the trade. We'll meet every day with nightly assignments to improve your process, and you'll share your work with a group. But this is a safe space for ideas. Writing is brave work. Ridicule is the tool of shallow people. Don't be one of the shallow people. And don't be a writing Scrooge, miserly sharing your work. We're all here to learn. As to the competition to have your work read by Mr. Cowell, each workshop will compete in three rounds of daily assignments. The winner of each round will select one chapter from their manuscript. The more rounds you win, the more chances you have. So let's pair up with a writing partner for the week to give each other feedback, go to lectures together, and help each other survive. Shall hey, we? We shall. Yeah. Hey, do you? Yeah. Mm. I see we have a lone wolf. You know what? It's no problem at all. I love working alone. I will, I will persevere. Oh, hey, sorry I'm late. My group was full, so they sent me over here. Aha! Uh -huh. I think we found your new partner. Uh, Pam, I, I'm not sure that's such a good... Perfect. Yep. For your first assignment tonight, you'll compose two pages of a fictional man and woman meeting romantically in a holiday setting. In the meantime, introduce yourself to your partner, please, and we'll get started. <sighs> Well, hi there. My name is Kim. My likes include perfect Christmas trees and eggnog. My dislikes include writing partners. Nothing personal. Hilarious. Tell me something. Did I do something to offend you? What's going on? No. It's just between the costume and the face plant, I am not used to embarrassing myself quite so many times in a 24-hour period with one person. All right, that's fine. That's my area. No, that's... It's your area there. It's going to be a long week. I'm trying to write. Uh, yeah, so am I. Well, it sounds as though you're sending Morse code down the hallway. Well, I'm not. But if I was, I might say something like, leave me alone, please, I'm writing. Is your typewriter supposed to sound like that? Because maybe you need to return it to the swap meet. Swap meet? <laughs> Look, you've got your process, I have mine. Uh-huh, and my process requires tranquility in order to focus. Well, my process involves typing on my vintage typewriter. That's my process. Well, my process involves not allowing other people's process to derail my process. Did you decorate your hotel room for Christmas? I... Yes, I did, okay? I happened to find it extremely inspiring when I'm writing to have the... Well, that explains all the Christmas gear in your suitcase. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, is that amusing to you? It was just that we're standing here arguing underneath the mistletoe. Oh, goodness. Yeah. So, what are you writing there, anyway? 
Where are you going? Uh, uh, um, uh, what are you, what are you doing? That's not finished. I'm cool. still polishing that. Uh huh. Well, uh -huh. Uh, I like it. This is great. You're meeting in line while waiting for Santa. That's really good. But your title gives it all away, right? Love in line for Santa? Come on, a title's gotta be a hook, not a hammer. I don't recall asking for your feedback. We're partners, remember? Safe space. Come on, if you're gonna be a writer, you need to be a tad more resilient. And if you wanna survive this weekend, you have got to keep your noise down. Do you understand? Your whales are calling. The whales are saying goodnight. <laughs> Fantastic title. Late night, huh? Oh, yeah, you could say that. Zeke, the fellow across the hall from me, he was up all night clacking. Clacking? Yeah, and clicking on his typewriter. Seriously, does it still do that thing when it gets in the line? The ding, ding. dings, ringing in my ears. Oh, excuse me. Uh, She'll have a North Pole special, and I'll have the Elf Espresso. Extra strong. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, I can't focus. Strangers are reading my work at this very moment. Kim, if you want to be a writer, you have to be read. Otherwise, I might as well just keep a diary. Well, that's a good point. That's the whole reason I'm here, right? Right. How are you doing? Anyway, what's going on with you? Oh, I may have spotted the elusive H.T. Cowell. No. Mm-hmm. See that fellow over there? Him? He's wearing Tweed. So is half of Scotland. Well, yes, but Tweed is how the men dress in H.G. Cowell's books. I can think of at least three examples. Okay. I think you might be onto something. Hmm? Nice work. You keep an eye on Mr. Tweed. Mm-hmm. I've got to get some of this reading done before class starts up again. Excuse me. No. What? Oh! He didn't! Oh. Oh. Him? Unbelievable. Zeke. Mm. Hey, good morning. Look at that. I see you took my advice on your title. What's the big idea? What big idea? Don't play innocent with me. Your story, Christmas on the Ice. Yeah, what's wrong with it? What do you mean, what's wrong with it? The couple meets when the woman face plants into a snowdrift and yeah. the guy is drinking coffee. You wrote about us. That's what makes it great fiction. Except it's not fiction. And just for the record, I did not blather when I climbed out of the snowdrift. Well, you kind of did. Look, real life is inspiration for every writer. Besides that coyote like Yelp you made when you slid across the ice horizontal, you just, you can't make that That Yelp belongs to me and you can't just borrow it for your story. Life is fodder for fodder. fiction. What are you, a horse? Oh, no snappy comeback to that? Well, I wasn't sure you were done, and I know you need total silence to come up with dialogues. Okay, Zeke, let me tell you something. I am here to learn, to, to focus, and to be a serious writer. I, I am on a mission, okay? <sighs> okay, fine. Look, I'm sorry, all right? I know I can be awkward. I'm a finance guy. I probably just don't get out enough. Well, then perhaps you ought to stick to investment advice and leave the writing advice to the professionals. Even if I think you have talent. I don't care what you think. You think I have talent? What, the story that you came up with for the assignment? It's funny, it's smart, it's festive. That's, that's a triple threat that you just pulled off. Having the meet in line at a Santa's village in a local mall, and then all the angst of thinking the other's married with kids when the kids turn out to be nieces and nephews, that's a fun twist. Honestly, I was jealous of how you came up with that so fast. Well, thank you. I really appreciate that. I mean, your dialogue needs a bit of work. Why don't you just quit while you're ahead? Okay. Kim. Yeah? Just a heads up. Your story's great. I loved it. Seriously? And the title fit perfectly. Not going the obvious route was a smart choice. Anyway, congrats. You just won the first round of the competition. I won? Zeke, you got a minute? Kim. Hi. Just wanted to say, good job winning the first round. Really surprising stuff. Thank you. So how'd you do it? You didn't just pull that story out of your hat, right? Well, I actually was thinking about this time when I was about five or so, 
My mom and dad took me to see Santa Claus, and we were waiting in line, and I looked over at them, and they started kissing. At the time, of course, I was super embarrassed about it, but then in retrospect, it sounded really romantic and a great thing to base my story on, so that's where I got the idea from. Wow, all of that just right out of the gates. Well, score one for beginner's luck, right? <laughs> Garth. <laughs> So close. You were about to make a classy move until you dropped the beginner's luck comments and sank it all. Shoo, <laughs> <laughs> shoo. Hey. Oh my gosh, congratulations. Rocking the workshop. You already won the first round. I guess on to round two. Well, tomorrow's assignment is writing a description for a romantic dinner. That sounds kind of daunting. So, well, you're doing well in English. How about chemistry? What? I don't know. You and Zeke. Oh, Sam, don't be silly. He's so perfect. No, hardly. Anyway, I'm not sure if you've noticed, but my ex is kind of lurking everywhere, so. Oh, well, all the more reason to flirt. That's so not my style. Anyhow, this week, my motive has nothing to do with men. It's just ironic, you know, being at a romance writer's convention. Right? Oh, and here's your chance. Let me guess, you came to gloat about the title? Oh, no. To congratulate you. Well, thank you. And to gloat. You're welcome for the title. Hey, I admit it, you were right, okay? I have a lot of resistance to feedback. For me, it feels more like facing a firing squad. So, you know, thank you, <laughs> okay? You happy? Let me buy you a coffee. I'd be happy if I could come up with romantic stuff as fast as you can. What about your face plant ice story? <laughs> Honestly, I just typed up everything that happened, so you pretty much did all the work for well. me. Look, I'm sorry that I used your life for fiction. It's just that writing has just been so hard for me lately. Really? No, the truth is I've hit kind of a dry patch. You, you get writer's block, too? Oh, yeah. It happens to the best of us. That makes quite a partnership. A seasoned writer with writer's block and a newbie who can't take criticism. I'd say our career prospects are rather dim. All right, how about this? From now on, you and me, we help each other make the most of this conference. Mm -hmm. Or at least declare a truce. Peace. I suppose. What's on the schedule? Are you following me? Hmm? No, I just left my schedule upstairs. I think it's a lecture called How Not to Get an Agent. <laughs> you okay? Yeah, no, I'm fine. You can't go to that. I can't. Look, didn't we just agree to help each other? That speaker is a proven dream crusher. Look, I've been to enough of these to know that you don't need a professional naysayer telling you how slim your chances are at making it. Plus, I've seen her talk before, and that speaker's a menace. Besides, I could teach you everything in that seminar with far better results. You could, huh? Mm -hmm. You're not trying to sabotage me, are you? Win this competition for yourself. Why would I do that? You already won the first round. Plus, Karen said you gotta trust your partner. Guess what? That's me. I'm your partner, and I'm telling you, don't go. Zeke, I can't not go to the lectures. I'm a newbie writer with one unpublished story to my name. I came here to learn. That's the whole point. All right, look. Give me 10 minutes of your time. If you think I'm wrong, I still have time to go to the seminar. Uh, okay, fine. Great. Meet me in the lobby in a half an hour. Bring your coat. That's... Snowman. Oh, no, actually, snow mams. There's two of them. I've got some lost and found items from inside to help me make my point. Which is what exactly? Just hear me out. <clears throat> this is Evelyn Crabb. She is a failed author, which oh. simply means she gave up. She became a book agent and now enjoys being spiteful to newbie writers. Why? For one reason, because she can. <laughs> it's nice to meet you, Evelyn. Oh, no. Miss Crab, thank you very much. Sorry, Miss Crab. Okay, this is Kelly Lovelife. She adores reading and authors, and she discovered in college that she knows how to sell and how to encourage people towards their goals. She's going to be offering Counterpoint today. It's nice to meet you, Miss Lovelife. Oh, uh, 
Miss Lovelife prefers you call her Kelly, and she wishes you a very Merry Christmas. Oh, look at that. Miss Crabb just rolled her eyes and suggested that agents keep a healthy distance from their clients. Miss Crabb says that just because your friends and family might think you're talented doesn't mean you're actually talented in any sort of professional sales sense of it. Hold on a second. Miss Lovelife's whispering something. Yes, Miss Lovelife. Oh, Miss Lovelife says that you're off to a great start. And every tiny victory along the road is worth celebrating. Oh, hold on. She says that the point of writing is not to be discovered, but rather self-discovery that hopefully other people can enjoy. So that's, whoa, this crab does not look happy. <laughs> well, why would she? I mean, there's ice water in her veins. <laughs> there you go, now you're getting into it. Now, come on, doesn't this be getting hammered over the head for an hour inside? I have to admit that it does. And how are you feeling about that one unpublished story to your name now? Well, I might be crazy, but I think that Miss Kelly Lovelife has just boosted my confidence. <laughs> <laughs> how long do you think those snow mammals are going to last? Uh, all winter, probably. <laughs> you think? Hey! Oh. Hey, there you are. What happened? Did the lecturer let out early? Oh, no, I escaped early. How not to get an agent should have been titled How to Never Feel Inspired to Write Again. Oh, and your ex, Garth, was applauding everything she was saying. I'm so not sorry I missed that. Mm. Well, next up, I think we're supposed to write five descriptive paragraphs of a romantic holiday dinner for tomorrow's assignment. That's right, and I'll be seeing you. Uh, I promise to type more quietly if you keep your whales down. You have a deal. All right. Oh, um, actually, hang on. Why don't the three of us go for dinner tonight as research, you know, for our romantic dinner assignments? Hey, that's a great idea. I'm a little bit rusty, admittedly. Garth's idea of a romantic dinner was free wine and cheese at a book launch. I mean, I guess we could uh, get a table somewhere. Oops. Uh, sorry, there goes the mark. I have a little spying mission to do, so why don't you two go to dinner together? You two enjoy dinner. Well, you know, I mean, uh, there are some great restaurants around here. Definitely. Right, I was thinking for research. Uh-huh, yeah. for the assignment. Yeah, perfect. Mm -hmm. So yeah. I will see you in the foyer at, say, 7? Seven. 7 o'clock sounds perfect. That's a great... Okay, Till then. 7 it is. All righty. Research. Huh. Research. I never do anything halfway. Well, in the name of research. That was amazing. Oh, it really was. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Now, we're not here to talk about the food, though. Research. Okay. Well, I think the candles are a nice touch. <laughs> the candles? Come on. You can do better than that. Let's see. Check out that chandelier. Okay. How is everything tonight? So good. I'm writing you a four-star review as we speak. <laughs> you like the dessert tonight? Uh, could I have the fresh berries, please? Berries? I'm getting the chocolate mousse. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you. So listen, I've been meaning to ask you, um, what's your book about anyway? Oh, let's, let's talk about you. Can you even still buy typewriter written anymore? You know, I know what you're doing, and you're changing the subject. Don't do that. Look, look you, you talked about your work today, and you won, right? Well, the winning I really liked. The sharing of the work, not so much. Well, I think that you need to get over your fear of sharing your work, is what I think. Okay, fine. My book is about a woman who finds herself single at the holidays after a string of failed relationships. And she meets this guy who suggests that they pretend to be dating in order to survive the holidays. That's fun. I'd love to read that. I'll think about it. 
Oh, while you think about it, maybe you can tell me what got you writing in the first place. Who got me started writing? It's my mom. She had such a way with words. She would write these offbeat short stories for our annual Christmas newsletter. They were so funny. They could just make you laugh until you had tears rolling down your face. Your mom sounds great. Yeah, she was. She, uh, she passed away four years ago, like Christmas time. I'm so sorry. Thanks. I miss her. My dad is fantastic, but you know, my mom was like my muse. She read every word I ever wrote. And somehow her feedback always went down really easy. <sighs> anyway. How does a guy like you get into writing romance? You know, I've always thought that all literature is romance, essentially. You know, the human heart is our canvas. It's the landscape that we toil in from Shakespeare to J.K. Rowling. That's really poetic. Well, thank you. I mean, I always wanted to be a writer, you know, but I was in finance, it was very cut and dry. And then one time I picked up this romance novel and it got the wheels spinning. I mean, my wife used to say that I was a diehard romantic, so I decided to channel our relationship and our marriage and the life around us into my writing and it was great. I mean, everything flowed when things were good. Everything. And then, uh, when, when the divorce hit, it was like hitting a brick wall. I'm sorry to hear that. Yeah. Was that when the writer's block started? Yeah, I mean, I, I feel like I fell off the romance horse and I just I haven't been able to find a way back on. So how come you go to writers' conferences? Well, yeah, um, oh. <clears throat> Thank you. Thank you. Mm. Why do I go to writers' conferences? I guess I'm desperately hoping something will shake loose, you know? Well, I do have an idea. I'd like to propose a little exercise. Oh, wait, so you're helping me now? Mm-hmm. Well, you need it, right? So the shoe is on the other foot. This is what it feels like. Do you have a problem with that? You know what, strangely, I have no problems with this at all. Well then, so here we are in a romantic restaurant at Christmas time. I want you to look around this room and tell me what the most romantic detail is that you can see. Don't make it something trite like the Yule log burning mm. in the fireplace or the faint echoes of Christmas music in the background. Okay, all right, I'll try. One romantic thing. Well, I guess it would have to be uh... Go on, spit it out. How shiny that spoon is. How shiny the spoon is? Are you kidding me? You are seriously not even trying, are you? I mean, I have a reason. There's a reason why the spoon is romantic? Yeah. It's because of how it reflects just a hint of candlelight in your eyes. What's the deal with you and Garth? <laughs> Garth. Now, he was always the serious writer of the couple. Or at least he liked to think so. At parties, I would hang back and stay quiet while he held court mm. in a crowd on all his brilliant ideas. Oh, yeah. Some people feel bigger by making others feel smaller. Yeah. He certainly feels like he's a big deal now that he's at the Dash of Romance blog. But it was partly my fault, too. I'm just getting to the point where I'm able to say the words, I'm a writer, without wanting to hide. So, writer? Yeah? You gonna show me your manuscript? Well, I don't know. You're so opinionated. Kim, look, you help me, let me help you. If you want to grow, you need to learn to take criticism. Even if that means standing still, a lot of people throw snowballs at you. Metaphorically speaking. Nope. Yeah. Whoa! What was that for? It's for using too many adjectives. Are you serious? Mm-hmm. How's he gonna develop a thick skin? What? Ugh. You! Ugh. 
Your right. paragraphs could run a bit shorter, too, by the way. All right. Mr. Writer's Block, is this knock any ideas loose? <laughs> <laughs> oh. 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 <laughs> what, that's all you've got? You can't get any of it. Thank you for helping me. Likewise. I, I think I might have misjudged you. I think I might have misjudged you too. I guess, uh... I guess we should head back. Yeah. We got class tomorrow. We do? Yeah, come on. Thank you for trusting my taste in restaurants. And um, thank you for knowing the way back to the inn. You're not going to do any typing tonight, are you? Typing? No. No, in fact, I think I am going to be doing some reading. Oh, yeah? Mm -hmm. You're giving me that manuscript. Oh, Zeke, come on Cam, now. listen, sometimes you got to take a chance. Instead of dipping your toe in the pool, you got to just jump right into the deep end. Uh-huh. I... I, fine. Okay, I surrender. I think it's in here somewhere. Here it is. You do have a computer, right? Give me that. I hope. Mm -hmm. You promise to be nice? I promise to be truthful. <laughs> Come on, let's get out of here. I gave him my manuscript to read. Oh, wow. That was brave of you. So, your research dinner must have gone well? I think it did. Ooh. He threw snowballs at me. So. Oh, okay. Ooh, any plot updates on the gentleman in Tweed? Oh, I am convinced he is Cowell. I mean, he's still playing a coy, right? But get this, last night, he ordered a glass of Flying Moon Merlot. Straight out of the dinner scene in chapter eight of Love Amongst the Maples. Oh, right, right, right. Anyways, we have plans to tour Gochi's farm later, and I intend to get to the bottom of this. Samantha, they broke the mold with you. <laughs> Thanks. I'll see you later after run the next one. Yep. Hi. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, Kim. How was your romantic dinner last night with, um... Oh, did he skip out on you? Food poisoning? Man, he just, he just left you all alone. Thank you for the concern, but I will be just fine on my own today. Let's hope so. <laughs> Sorry I'm late. Maybe just some time. Good morning. How are you this oh, morning? I bet you're one of those people that opens advent calendars one day at a time, aren't you? Out with it. Did you read my manuscript? Well, I picked it up last night. And you couldn't put it down. Actually, I haven't quite finished reading it yet. You hated it. No, no, no. I just, you know what? I read slowly, carefully. Is that okay? Well, that's just stellar. Waiting around for pain is super fun. Look, I hate to break it to you, but waiting for feedback is part of the job. Welcome back, class. And I think we have our latest winner to announce for round two of the competition. Congratulations, winner. Thank you. Save me a seat at lunch, partner. You got it. Hey, congratulations. Thanks, Kim. And you know what? Sorry about yesterday's blog post. What? Oh, tell me he didn't. Oh, Xmas at the writer's conference? As in my ex. You know, he's just trying to throw you off your game, right? Oh, well, it's working. <sighs> well, Garth was always going to have the upper hand when it came to that sort of assignment. I mean, look at his blog. It's nothing but a bunch of, you know, mundane observations. Mm, I know. I guess there's always round three of the competition. Well, what does it matter? You already won the first round, you know, you got your hat in the ring with Cowell. Yeah, it's not just about that. It's about the fact that Garth doesn't believe in me. I just want to prove him wrong. OK. 
him. Look, whether it's Garth or Cal or anybody reading your work, the only person who needs to believe in you is you. Now look, can we please go back inside where it's warm? Zeke, please. Am I any good? Kim, you get more compliments than anybody in our group. But that's on the writing assignments. You've read some of my manuscript. You must have some thoughts. I mean, I'm just one guy. What do I matter? Because I just want to know. Before I chase this rainbow any further, before I start sending this stuff out to publishers, I mean, I don't know if I can take any more rejection in my writing. I've certainly had plenty of it when it comes to dating. I know that. I find hard to believe. Oh, trust me. <laughs> my dating life makes the Titanic look like a pleasure cruise. <laughs> Would you please just tell me your thoughts? Look, I think that you need to stop obsessing. All right? And there's a great industry lecture today at noon. I'm gonna take your mind right off this. I thought you hated the lectures. I do. I'm not going. I got a manuscript to finish. Okay. <laughs> Hurry up and finish it. But take your time. I'm so excited for this talk. Catherine McCollum. She's like the grand dam of romance fiction. I know. Thank you. Thank you. Seasons greetings, everyone. As you see, I never travel without my tree. <laughs> As I was thinking about what to talk to you about today, I flash back to my friend H.T. Cowell. He has a very interesting approach to writing, which I don't think he'd mind if I shared with you. Think of a Christmas tree as a story you're living or the story you're wanting to tell. A string of lights illuminates our path. Each bulb is a plot point or meaningful event in our lives. Ornaments are the characters and concepts, giving the tree personality. <laughs> and the angel is our clear point of view from above that lets us peek into the lives of others, which just leaves the gifts under the tree. And the gifts are what each person takes away from what we create, our gift to them. I have just got to meet H.T. Cowell. I'm working on it. <laughs> wow, that will be a tough act to follow. Even for Cowell, how's he gonna top that in this big speech? Not possible, just not what? Oh. Yes? All done. And? And I'm taking us to lunch, so go grab your coat. I'm gonna get the car. That's not an answer. Grab your coat. I'm gonna get the car. Go. He loves the book. Yay! He loves it. <sighs> All right. You brought me to a happy place. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm here. I am prepared. Hit me with it. Listen, well, so we're, on a, we're on a work break. All right, so let's just enjoy our crepes first. We can talk about that later. Zeke, tell me the truth. Go on. All right, fine. Look, I think you're genuinely talented. All right, I think you're a solid writer as gets. I think that your structure and dialogue are fun and lively. But? But I just, I, I don't think it's there yet. Ouch. No, come on, hear me through. I think your characters aren't fully realized yet, and I think that the details don't feel personal. Okay, let me give you a for instance. The hotel where they're staying in New York, the Leone, right? Yeah. Does it have a doorman? Does it have solid doors or revolving doors? Does the vintage lobby take your breath away when you step inside? Or is it a shell of its former glory? I don't know. I don't know either. That's the problem. The details don't feel real. Almost as if, I don't know, like you'd never been in New York or something. Well, I haven't spent much time there. No. Writers got to know her world inside out. There's a good snowball when you need one. And we have to see that world through your character's eyes. That's really important. Look, Honestly, I'm not talking down to you from a high horse, all right? I'm the guy who fell off the riding horse entirely, remember? I think it's a solid first draft. All I'm saying is it just needs a little tweaking, a little work, that's all. They all do, you know? All right, so as someone who's about to be published, in your humble opinion... It's not publishable yet.
Zeke again. Don't care. Just by giving you feedback, he's still a great guy. I know, but I still can't help being mad at him. Because he didn't fall in love with your manuscript? I mean, it seems a little, just a little unfair. Maybe just a little bit. But see, that makes me mad too, because I'm being so childish. <laughs> then you probably blame him for it. Well, yeah, because it's his fault. Uh, no, it is. <laughs> what? <laughs> No, it, look, it's one thing when I get feedback on my writing exercises from the class, but Zeke not liking my manuscript, that's like a piece of my soul. Oh, well, okay, whoa, he did not not like it. He just, he just said it could be even better. Also, you know, Zeke's where we want to be. The book deal, right? Just one book. Well, it's more than you and I combined. And plus, you've got to give him props for giving you pointers. That's true. Yeah. Well, hey, I have my big sit down tomorrow with the book agent and publisher, so. You're gonna be great. If nothing else, maybe Zeke helped take the sting out of it. You're so talented. Thanks, Sam. Cheers. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> Dad, I just wanted to hear your voice. I didn't wake you, did I? <sighs> Not a chance. I've been up for hours wrapping gifts. How's the conference? Are you a literary rock star yet? Well, I haven't destroyed my hotel room, but um, I was up pretty late working. How's it going? Seriously? Well, the criticism is kind of hard. I bet it is. It can be hard to give tough advice, even harder to listen to it, even when it's meant to help. I wish I could just carry you around with me all day, Dad. <laughs> I'd be murder on your lumbar. <laughs> well, I have my professional panel today with the book agent and publisher. Do you have any words of wisdom? Well, it's time to put your game face on, kiddo. Love you, Dad. See you later. Hey, Zeke. Hey. Oh, hey. I got you just in time. Look, I came down because I wanted to wish you good luck and because I kind of wanted to apologize for what I said yesterday. If it was too harsh, I didn't mean to. No, Zeke, stop. I know that those snowballs you threw at me were only meant to help. And it occurred to me, you spent so much time reading my book, you didn't even have time to turn in your assignment for the competition. Well, you know, I was, I was torn, but then I figured I'd much rather finish a very talented new author's manuscript. <laughs> you don't have to say that. I wouldn't if it wasn't true. Well. It's time for me to face the music. My professional panel is starting right now. Well, listen, if I can give you some unsolicited advice, just think of them as snowmans. Okay. All right, you got this. I'm sorry. Thank you. Come in, we've got to keep things moving. Oh. Miss Rossi? Yes, you can call me Kim. That's all right. We enjoyed your premise. You know your way around a sentence, and your structure is respectable. But from the sample of the manuscript that you submitted, at times your characters, they lack authenticity. They seem a little too perfect. Mm -hmm. I'd like to see the world more from their perspective. Mess them up. Give them problems, contradictions, something that they, they ache for, and more detail, a lot more detail. And when you do that, you might have a really good book here. Would you be willing to work with me to get me there? Oh, no. This still has first draft feel. Hmm. Oh. You've got a long way to go, but, but I mean this. Don't be discouraged. I can assure you he hasn't said that to anyone else here today. <laughs> so keep up the good work, and you've got talent. So you're saying... We're done. For now. Thank you. Oh, right. Thank you. to go. Girl, I just want to hide in my room and bury my head in an H.T. Cowell book and forget about the world. Really? You know what? I have an even better idea. Come on. You've officially entered the world of professional writer. <laughs> okay. In fact, a rejection is something to be savored, celebrated, like a fine wine. It is. Mm -hmm. Wait, what? 
What is that? We're celebrating. What? Wow. As a matter of fact, I remember my first projection. Oh, yeah? Yeah. I strolled down to the mailbox thinking I was going to pick up some Christmas cards. And instead, I got a rejection form letter. It's like a snowball to the face. <laughs> but the good news is the sting gets a little less each time. I remember my first rejection. It was Timmy Lonergan on the playground at recess. He just dumped me in front of the entire school. Oh. Well, look, whether it's love, whether it's writing, it takes a lot of resilience to stay in the game long enough for a happily ever after. And Timmy's lost, by the way. Well. <laughs> Listen, I've got an idea. Would you be willing to try something a little different tomorrow? Like what? Well, they've given us the day off to do rewrites, so we don't have a class anyway. That's true. I want to take you somewhere. Maybe a little trip. A trip? Where? Just trust me. Plus, my motives are partly selfish. I mean, they say a change of scenery can work miracles for writer's block. <laughs> I don't know what it is about you, but I'm in. Terry? Good morning. I tend to think morning begins after I've had my first sip of coffee. Well, I'm pretty sure they have coffee where we're going. Do you bring a change of clothes? Yes. We're not going duck hunting, are we? Because I don't like that. It's winter. No ducks. Lucky them. So where are we going? Green Mountain Valley, Winooski River? New York City. I got us tickets. We're going to New York City? Like, right now? Are, are you kidding? No. I've got more frequent flyer miles that I know what to do with. I'm a finance guy, remember? I got clients from down the coast. OK, I have a confession to make. Hmm. I've never actually been to New York City. Yeah, that's pretty clear from your descriptions of it in your book. No, you're pretty funny sometimes. Now is not one of them. Big Apple, here we come. You gotta experience the place with all your senses to be able to write about it. Okay, so this is Midtown, right? So Soho and Wall Street are that way. Broadway is behind us somewhere. Oh, I am officially overwhelmed. See, look, it's the hotel that I wrote about in my book, the Hotel Naomi. That's right. Well, why'd you choose this one? Um, I liked the look of the facades. That explains why your descriptions didn't quite capture the details, but that's okay, right? Because now that you're here in person, any thoughts? Well, doorman, check. Carved wooden double doors. Those are really nice. And it just kind of takes your breath away. It feels like being a kid on Christmas morning, like that moment when you're just about to open your very first present. What do you say we open this present and see what's inside? Let's do it. All right. Say we take an elevator to the top floor. We should check in first. Separate suites, of course. Check in? What do you mean, check in? A client of mine runs this hotel. I called in a favor for a couple of suites. Amazing. Thank you. After you. Wow. Check out the view. Oh, my goodness. <sighs> Christmas in New York. Wow, I can still barely believe this is really happening. And is it everything you expected so far? Actually, no. No. It's even better. Sorry. 
Oh, this is Samantha. You don't mind if I tell her no. where we are? No, knock yourself out. Okay. Hey, Samantha, I'm so glad you called. Wait, why are you whispering? I'm having dinner with Mr. Tweed. No. I know. So I went by your room this morning and you weren't there. What's up? <laughs> Zeke and I are playing hooky. Hey, research trip. Yeah, research trip. Zeke flew me to New York City. That's so exciting. And speaking of more exciting news, I won a third round of the competition in my workshop, so I guess my hat's in the ring, too. Hey, congratulations. That's awesome. Hope you have a great time tonight. You really deserve it. <laughs> oh, and here he comes. Gotta go. Bye. <laughs> okay. <sighs> and so, you're ready to hit the streets of New York City? Definitely. What I mean is, New York is so amazing, but the details, they're different than how I expected. The street lights off the pavement, the electricity in the air. You're gone, give me some specifics. It also smells different than I thought it would. Okay. I'm sure there's the roasting chestnut smell I expected, but there's also the air coming up. The subway grills, the taxi exhaust mixing with the smell of expensive perfume. It's really beautiful. Oh, this is exactly what I've been looking for. <laughs> Chestnuts literally roasting on an open cart grill. <laughs> Not quite an open fire, but close. Good stories are grounded in the details, aren't they? That's right. Can I get it back? Yeah, thanks. Writers are just people who pay really close attention to those details. Chestnut? Mm -hmm. Yes. It's, it's hot. Yes. This is your first New York Chestnut? My first New York Chestnut? Hey, how's the writer's block coming? What writer's block? Is my typing too loud? No, it's kind of soothing, actually. It was great. I was up all night working. Yeah, me too. Hey, Kim, look, there's <laughs> there's something I've been meaning to tell you. Well, hey, hang on a second. Samantha just texted. She says they're expecting a huge storm in Vermont, and they've just moved Cowell's lecture from tonight to today, 2 p.m. OK, uh, look, let's not panic. Not panic, but we're 300 miles away, and they're canceling flights. What, what do you suggest? I suggest you be ready in five, and I'm going to find us a new flight. On no notice with a storm coming in? Then I can ride a cart. We can drive there if we have to. We'll be there in time. Well, I hope so. Hey, Kim, I just wanted to double check. It's uh, chapter 19, right? Thank you. Yes, chapter 19. I've just been so inspired here. That's so great. I'm loving this new confidence thing you've got going on. I know, right? It's the first time I've actually been excited about somebody reading my work. So great. Well, I'm going to be the first person in the auditorium, and I will save us seats, so just please hurry. Thanks, Sam. OK, bye. Hi, I'm submitting for Kim Rossi and Samantha Bike. Thank you. Mounted. Hi. Just give me a minute. It's already packed. Kim, wait, before you go inside, listen, there's something I need to tell you. Zeke, we're gonna be late. I'll see you inside. Hurry. So, you miss a submission, huh? Oh, no. Samantha submitted it for me. Your name's not on the board. That's impossible. Kim! Hurry! 
gosh. Sit down. I had to fight these people off with these seats. Samantha, what happened to my manuscript submission? To be read by Cowell? Well, I submitted it. If my name's not on the board. Are you sure? I submitted it myself. There must be some sort of a mistake. I don't know. It's not there. Oh, my gosh. It's him. I told you. It's him. He's right. Modern romance, as we know it, was invented by the French in the 12th century. And I don't know an author more in touch with that legacy today than H.T. Cowell. It was the saddest day of my career as his editor when he decided to stop writing new books. But I'll let him tell you more. Ladies and gentlemen, H.T. Cowell. I never planned to be a writer. I mean, I dabbled a little. But I had a button-down job in the city. And my wife would get worried if I spent too much time writing. So I played it safe. And it was only when I was arriving the train into the city every day that I would think of stories and characters based on some of the passengers around me. What if that bike messenger swept that transit worker off her feet. And what if that woman reading the Wall Street Journal suddenly turned and proposed to the construction guy one seat over? Anyway, uh, one thing led to another, and pretty soon I had one bestseller and then another bestseller. And that whole time, I avoided the press because... because I needed to be anonymous. I just I wanted to stay an observer. Well, pretty soon I was writing all the time. And I was juggling deadlines. And I didn't even notice that my second love was taking me away from my first. Until my wife asked me for a divorce. Looking back, I should have done things differently. Writing about love and romance became a lot harder when love and romance disappeared from my life. Well, pretty soon my writing stopped and I withdrew from the world. And the truth is, I had really drifted from what it was that I loved about writing in the first place, which is seeing the world through someone else's eyes, whether that's a character or just someone special. Especially at Christmas. Yeah. So, are the rumors true? Are you releasing an 800-page book? Uh, yeah, they're sort of true. Uh, my publisher is releasing an 800-page anthology of... So, so no new book? Not as such, no, I'm sorry. Not right now, anyway. Oh, come on, look, I didn't come here to be a downer, so maybe I can serve as some sort of cautionary tale. Don't play it safe. Don't hide out. Even if it feels easier sometimes. You know, recently, somebody reminded me that inspiration can come from anywhere. and surprises come along every day. Whew. Thanks. Kim? Kim. Hey, you didn't answer my text. I didn't know what to say. You lied to me. You've been lying to me since we first met. 
For someone who says writing is all about the details, you sure left one important detail out. Uh, for a reason, okay? I wanted you to know me for me, not H.T. Cowell. You promised to be honest with me. You had so many opportunities to tell me the truth. Instead, you wanted to save your big reveal for the, the promotion of your anthology? No, it's not like that. I never wanted to go public at all. But even best-selling authors have shelf lives, especially if they don't produce new work. So the board at my publishing house told me I had to come here, I had to go public, I had to promote the anthology, or they wouldn't publish me anymore. But look, listen, I just I never expected that I would meet somebody like you. And that whole story about having a book deal. Gosh, talk about fiction. I don't even know what to call you. What's your name? Well, my mom calls me Zeke. Short for Hezekiah. And can we do know each other? In person and through our writing? Except the person I thought I knew was a struggling writer just like me, not some writing star. Former star. And what, you needed some newbie or a muse or whatever to get re-inspired? And all this time you're telling me to be authentic with my work? And you're completely hiding who you actually are? I, I, I wanted to tell you. But you didn't trust me enough to tell me the truth. And that's the worst rejection slip of all. That writer's conference was a real eye-opener. And I learned something really important. Okay. No more playing it safe in life or in work. I'm going to scale back my hours at the car dealership and fully commit myself to being the writer I was born to be. Wow. Maybe we should send you to a writer's conference every Christmas. Next year, I intend to speak at one. Oh, hang on, Dad. I have to get this. Samantha, how are you? I'm good, actually. How about you? How's the writing going? I have been rewriting like a fiend. Look at you, going pro. <laughs> Make sure you don't just write your way through the holiday. Hey, I'm a Christmas romance writer. This is the time of year I feel most inspired. Uh-huh. Well, speaking of which, have you heard from Zeke at all? No. Even if I did, I don't know what I would say to him. Well, I don't know how to break this to you, but I won the contest to be read by him. Congratulations. That's amazing. Yeah. Well, it felt good to beat out Garth. <laughs> I bet. It's the least I could do for you. And tomorrow, I'm going to meet Zeke. So if there's anything you, you want me to ask him, yeah. anything at all. No, thanks. Are you sure? I mean, you two are so good together. Even if I could get past the fact that he lied to me, what would a big shot author want to do with a wannabe writer like me? Do not sell yourself short. Well, hey, maybe my new ending will work. Oh, so you have new pages? I do. Send them to me. What are you waiting for? Come on, think of it as an early Christmas gift. You know what? Yes, I will send them to you. I could totally use a fresh pair of eyes on them. Thank you. That's my girl. Merry Christmas. Mm -hmm. I gotta run. Bye, Sam. Merry Christmas, Kim. Came to say Merry Christmas oh. and that I was wrong. Not that I'm disagreeing with you, um, but what about? Oh, about, you know, you not being a real writer. Oh, that. <laughs> <You know. laughs> I mean, to be honest, at the conference, your pages were amazing. They're some of the best by far. But I thought you said it was just beginners. No, luck. no, not at all. It was a joke. Uh, Obviously. Okay. No. It was funny. Yeah. Um, no, I was, I was wondering, actually. Go on. Well, maybe you want to pick things up where we left off? Yeah. Go on a date sometime, talk about writing? Um, gee, you know what? Uh, I think, I think maybe you were right about us being on different paths. Right, no, no, but the, the paths, they can come. And I am just really busy. Yeah, no, you're, you're busy. I'm pretty busy myself. Uh -huh. um, you know, here's a thought. Maybe you could put in a good word for me with Cal. <laughs> <laughs> Aw, you're too funny, Garth. You have a Merry Christmas. 
See you later. Yeah, um, Merry Christmas. Bye. Bye. Not bad for a guy who eats frozen dinners 90% of the time. It's perfect, Dad. Now we just have to get the gravy finished. Can you get that? I'm carving. Who would come by on Christmas Day? Just a friend of mine didn't have any place to go for Christmas dinner. Oh. Hello there. Hi. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Zeke, what are you doing here? Oh, I mean, I can't not chase after you. I am a romance writer. You're also a successful author pretending he isn't one. And you just used a double negative, by the way. <sighs> Look, Kim, I was wrong not to be more honest with you. I just, I was just so happy spending time with you. I didn't want to shatter the magic. And I'm so sorry. Well, I did learn one thing at the conference. What's that? It's never too late to rewrite a chapter until you get it right, until you get it perfect. So you're saying? Hi, my name is Kim. I'm HT. My friends call me Zeke. <laughs> well, in that case, it's nice to meet you, Zeke. Ooh, almost forgot. This is for you. Merry Christmas. Pendant Publishing? They want to work with me on my novel? Your rewrite was amazing. Wait, how, how did you? Samantha, she sent me the new pages. <sighs> and so you forced them to take it on? No, 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 I just got them to look at it. It was your writing that made the chief editor flip. Seriously? Serious, you loved it. And that's all because we... I, I, I don't even know what to say. Thank you so much. <laughs> <sighs> wow. Well, I think that's what they call a, a happy ever after. Yeah, I suppose it is. So kiss me already. We are standing under the mistletoe after all. So we are. this time of year. Getting into the Christmas spirit with romantic holiday movies is one of my favorite traditions. Thank you for watching our five night Thanksgiving movie event. There's a lot more fun headed your way, so meet me right back here tomorrow night at eight o'clock. You don't want to miss Jody Sweeten and Finding Santa. I'm looking for Santa Claus. Being Santa <laughs> isn't my thing. Maybe I just like hanging out with you. On Hallmark Channel, your ultimate countdown to Christmas destination. Happy Thanksgiving and have a great night.